Well, hi guys. I'm, uh, I'm doing this webinar from uh, Riga. I just arrived today and I'm going to Riga Dev Day uh, from Wednesday to Friday. So I'm really excited to be here. You can see, well, you can see this, this nice room. From, uh, this is not, uh, this is not my, my room, of I'm course. Going to Riga Dev Day. Let me. Uh, let me just Friday. so um, I'm really excited to be here you can let me just sorry I I have uh, another screen like I, I was hearing myself so <laughs> well we have uh, Martin here hi guys hi Martin so I'm just I'm just gonna say some uh, basic rules so we have uh, this uh, there so you can write your questions uh, just on the page you can also ask questions in um, in twitter you can use angular gs underscore labs and uh, we will uh, check them out and i'll ask uh, martin if he's uh, you know able to help and um, well uh, martin is going to talk about ng metadata and before, before you start, Martin, I'd like to tell uh, a little uh, story from uh, NGNL. Sure. Yeah, it's OK? Yeah, go so, for it. <laughs> so I, I was speaking at NG, NGNL, and we were sharing a nice hotel. And then just the days of, of the conference, I was having breakfast with other guys. And then I saw like Igor Mina. And he was sharing the table with you, Martin, yep. isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And it seems like they were in a, you know, in a dance conversation. And I got there, and I don't remember what was the topic. Uh, I think it was something about uh, transpiling uh, TypeScript or something like that. And, and then Martin told me about ng metadata. So I got really interested. And I'd like you to tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. How it sounds? It's just perfect. That's the reason why I'm here. OK, so, cool. Well, before that, OK, okay let me, I, I forgot to introduce the webinar. So I'm starting this webinar. This is the first webinar. And I'll try to invite uh, any, anyone from the community that has something to share. It doesn't need to be like a really uh, dense topic or like well today we are presenting like a, a, a github project but it could be anything that you are passionate about and you want to share you know your thoughts on uh, with the other guys so yeah let's uh, let's just that now we have, we have covered what we will be doing in the webinars i think you can you can start with your uh, explanations perfect so tell me a little bit more about ng metadata Sure, you got it. So let me share my screen. Cool. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. OK, maybe just wait for a second. Do you see it now? OK. Yes. Perfect. So today we'll be talking about how to write Angular 2 with TypeScript and ng metadata. So something about me, who am I? Uh, as you may notice, I like Star Wars. Uh, my name is Martin Hochel. I'm software engineer at Embed IT in Prague. Uh, you can talk to me at Twitter or at GitHub. I'm also organizer of ng party meetup in Prague, Czech Republic. And I'm the author of ng metadata. So enough about me. Uh, I would like to thank Gerard for this opportunity, and I really love what is happening right now in Angular community. That oh, I, know, I know this logo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's our logo. So well, I like I like your logo. I think I told you. Yeah, you did. I gave you stickers. Remember? <laughs> really cool logo. Thanks. So yeah, I'm really happy that this is happening. All right, so let's go to the topic. Angular 1, uh, I assume all of you know Angular 1. So Angular 1 is amazing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> cool. So it gives a separation of concerns, uh, testing support, declarative HTML, 
it forces you to write maintainable code. But when we started to write our code, it looked like this. It, it doesn't wow. look like very maintainable. It's kind of spaghetti. I hear you, jQuery. Is that your code? No, no. That's <laughs> <laughs> this to the MVC example. So yeah. Okay. That, that wasn't nice. So we did it all wrong uh, at the beginning. We introduced control hell, ng include all the way, scope soup, and many, many other anti patterns. But we are smart people and we got lessons learned. And we started to leverage component driven architecture. Uh, for those who don't know what it is, it's architecture that your application is a component tree and there is one day data flow. It's really important to write your apps this way if you want to migrate from Angular 1 to Angular 2, because uh, under the hood, Angular to leverage these techniques. So it's really important. If you want to know more, there is a link for a fantastic blog post by Tero. And he's uh, guiding you step by step how to refactor from the old code to the component driven. So, and also, a very uh, important concept are smart and dumb components, uh, which uh, came from React, I think. So I won't go into details. Tero uh, explains this pretty well on his blog post. Yeah. Cool. So JavaScript is also amazing, right? It's all about JavaScript nowadays. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but ES5, we got ES5. It's had a lot, it, it, it doesn't support all the great things like other uh, more mature languages had. But in summer 2015, we get the new ES6 standard, which gives us a lot of benefits, a lot of new constructs and whatnot. So that's perfect. But I don't know about you, but I've written JavaScript applications, very huge enterprise application. And it's really hard to work with pure JS in those apps. So what can we do about that? There is the thing called TypeScript. Did you heard about TypeScript? Yes. Yeah, so what is TypeScript? So TypeScript uh, starts and ends with, ends with JavaScript. It's a superset of uh, ES ECMAScript. We get ES5, above ES6. Then we have some future uh, features like ES7 and optional typing system. And this is re really important for huge applications. <clears throat> when we compile the code, the types are removed, so there is just vanilla JS, and it, it is leveraged also as a transpiler. Maybe you know Babel, so TypeScript does similar thing, so it's pretty cool. And what about the TypeScript stuff? It gives you type, type inference, uh, gradual typing. You got optional types, so it doesn't forces you to type everything like in statically typed languages. Uh, the types are structural, so it's pretty flexible. And you, yeah. can con you can configure the type checking. You can turn it off if you want. So it does, again, it doesn't force you to do anything. Uh, every JavaScript file is a valid TypeScript file. So there is no reason why not to start using it. And also, Angular team got his lessons learned. No transclusion. <laughs> or oh, other. yeah, no, no, that's terrible. No transclusion, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they've written the new Angular in TypeScript. And this is really good design choice, in my opinion. It gives us nice, simple declarative API, thanks to the uh, new uh, ECMAScript features and the TypeScript. And under the hood, they're using just the native platform. Uh, most of these are module system, uh, script classes, and decorators. So there is no rocket science, no abstractions like we uh, used to write in Angular 1. So how does it like in Angular 2? Let's look at a component. So here we have some simple component, and we are using script uh, module imports. So we are importing this component, which is uh, basically a decorator uh, that's uh, providing a metadata for a class. Yeah. That, then we have some uh, so special API uh, provided by Angular to tell uh, the class about how it should behave. And then we have vanilla ECMAScript class. So no rocket science. It looks pretty great for me. What do you think? Yeah, no, it, it's fine. 
Yeah, cool. So, and what is the AdSync once again? Uh, those are called decorators, and there are two types. Just decorators, which is basically a function which is decorating uh, the target which you are providing. Or you can use uh, configurable decorators, which are returning another function. And this, this is the major thing that uh, Angular 2 uses, the configurable decorators. We will talk about it more later. All right, so this is Angular 2. And I would like, really would like to do that Angular 1. Is this really possible? What, what can I do for this? Well, can you do that? You can, <laughs> with ng metadata, of course. So wow. uh, let's tell me about the story, how, how it all started. Yeah, what, what, when did you start uh, working on ng metadata? That, I think that's, that's an interesting uh, thing to explain here. Yeah, so I love TypeScript. Since day one that Microsoft introduced it, it's really great benefit for development. And when I started at my current uh, work, the UI team used it, have used uh, ES5 with Angular. So I was like, <laughs> all right, I need to go back to, to write ES5 code. So this summer, uh, I finally convinced them to, to switch to TypeScript with ES6. And nice. yeah, it was a big win for me. <laughs> and. I have a lot of experience writing Angular with TypeScript, and it's, it's like too much ceremony, too much boilerplate. So I was thinking, OK, Angular 2 is in diff preview or in alpha phase at that time. API looked good for me, reasonable. Decorators, classes, you know, pretty yeah. solid. So what I did, I, I just wrote Angular to decorators and utilities for Angular 1. And yeah, let's let's. Let's go further and look how, how it works again. Yeah, okay. sure. let, me, let me see some code. Stop talking. Yeah, stop talking, Martin. Everyone wants to see some code. All right. So let's talk about component, because this is uh, the most important thing in your application. <clears throat> so here we are, have uh, Angular 1, 1.4 uh, version, ECMAScript 5 of a uh, uh, directive which is a, basically a component, because it has isolate scope, restriction to element, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's, a little, it's a little bit verbose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's super verbose, in my opinion. But uh, we got now Angular 1.5, which gives us some sugar uh, with this component. Oh, that's so much nicer. Yeah, it's much nicer. And let's look how it looks uh, in uh, ng metadata and TypeScript. So we have uh, the 1.4 code in ES5. And here is ng1 with TypeScript and ng metadata. And again, I'm just using the platform. Here are uh, ES6, ES6 module import. Yeah. And this is the decorator, its specific API, and vanilla ES6 class. And here I'm just registering uh, the component to the Angular 1 container. And yeah, well done. That, uh, sorry to interrupt you, um, that looks like really, really similar to Angular 2. Yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, like compare it with Angular 2. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, ng metadata, Angular 1, TypeScript, and then the left side is Angular 2. Can you spot the differences? Well, not on the, <laughs> not on the first part. I think, yeah, when you are, you know, when you are registering the, Directive, that's, that bit is uh, completely not there. So yeah. that's in, uh, in Angular 2. Yeah, that's, uh, you, don't, you don't need to do that in Angular 2 because it's another machinery, but we need to do that in Angular 1. So that's, that's the only difference which will be removed uh, during migration. So, OK. You're also, using, you're also using the spread operator there, isn't it? Yep, yep, this spread operator, because uh, Angular Directive API needs uh, two arguments, like the string, the name, and the reference, or the function. And this provide uh, is returning an array, cool. which, which under the hood creates the name for you and the reference. So no wow. magic, magic strings, just references. You're doing some magic there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a magician. Ah, not really. But it's a refactoring, so it's good. Yeah. All right. 
So how does the API look? In Angular 2, the API is defined by those inputs and outputs, uh, which are in Angular 1 bindings. So we have inputs properties, uh, which are, are coming from the parent to the child. And we have events, if you want. If you want. There are outputs. They are coming uh, from uh, the child to the parent. Oh, I like this slide. I think I, I'm going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> so inputs. Uh, this is how component this component in ng metadata, and we are defining here inputs. We are some strings, and then we have to tell the TypeScript compiler about those properties, so it uh, won't uh, uh, get errors. And this is how it looked like in HTML when we defined it. Uh, you may notice the second thing is the alias. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, like that. I like that. So you can use you know different naming. In uh, within your component that uh, you are using in your, you know, in your API, your public API. So it's it's a nice feature. Yeah, and let's take a look at the outputs. Uh, they work similar way. You just don't use inputs but outputs property, and uh, the machinery is the same. Again, you have to define the properties um, or functions for the class for the TypeScript compiler, and this is how it use again in HTML. So pretty straightforward. It looks like uh, uh, pretty the same in Angular 2. OK, but you might notice those are just strings. And I really hate strings. They are not uh, very good for refactoring. They introduce bugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what can we do about that? Again, the native platform gives us property decorators. Those are not special, any, anything special. Those are just decorators used for properties, not for class, but for the properties. Let's take a look. Uh, we have input decorator, uh, which is equal to equal sign in Angular 1 bindings. It will be, uh, by default, one-way binding uh, starting in Gmetata 2.0. So uh, this is, again, the component which we had there. We are using inputs in a component decorator. And let's wait for it. Boom. Nice. Now we are using the proper decorators. Everything is in one place. We have no duplication. We have no magical strings. We have just a uh, name of the property. So very concise, very readable. The same with output. Output decorator is the same as in Angular 1 ampersand expression. So again, this is the code uh, with the outputs property. And again, boom. We are using output decorators. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think it's it's much readable, more maintainable. I, I like it. What do you think? Well, it's it's lovely. You know, the thing is that you are using Angular one, but just writing the components like you would in Angular two. So you are actually, well, not using Angular two, but that's the closest I can imagine. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's talk a little bit more about it. Maybe you are asking why? Why did I do this? Did you heard about ng forward? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's the community driven project. Uh, they did a pretty solid work and they are doing something similar, but uh, we have been talking lately uh, with uh, some team members and we wanted to migrate our projects to just have one uh, nice. kind of this project for the community. But unfortunately, that didn't happen, and it won't be happening. And, oh, wow. I, will, and I will tell you why. What happened there? Yeah, I mean, I, I will just tell you. It, it wasn't feasible for our use case for production code. Uh, it, it just tries ng forward to mimic the Angular 2 machinery. They are uh, introducing there a lot of abstractions. I see. They are trying to use Angular 2 template style, those banana bindings, and you, you are pretty familiar with those. Yeah. And they are creating wrappers for all NG, almost all NG uh, event directives. But again, those templates will never be Angular 2 templates. So. Yeah, it feels a little bit out of place then. Yeah. Uh, also, they wanted, want to support uh, all the language versions, like Angular 2 does, ES5, ES6, and TypeScript. That's nice. But again, 
uh, you, you can benefit of the TypeScript power. For example, you can use uh, parameter decorators. So that was yeah, maybe they are a little bit too ambitious there. Yeah, yeah. And also, there's a lack of Angular 1 specific API. For example, if you want to inject or uh, require other directives to directive, it isn't possible. Like, uh, in uh, in many various situations, it can be done, but not in all situations. So that was a really uh, deal breaker for us. And it lacks also ng2-like features. Like, they don't support input-output uh, decorators on the directive. They are missing some lifecycle hooks, and I got implemented all of these. And there is no ng-upgrade support yet. There is an issue for it, but it's not ready yet. So those are just a few reasons why I wrote a new library. Basically. I see. The thing, uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you again, but yeah, sure. I think that uh, what will happen is, because uh, Angular 2 is still not uh, released, once it's released, we will see a lot of uh, teams and uh, companies trying to move uh, and migrate these projects and teams to, to use Angular 2. And then when that happens, they will need you know, uh, approaches that can be you know, scalable. And usually, if you have a, like a big team, like maybe 20 guys, yeah. you will tell them, OK, from tomorrow, we will change all the stack, and you will be using, I don't know, TypeScript. So at that time, they will need you know, all the options that they can get. And I think that ng metadata and also ng upgrade uh, will play you know, an important role there. Yeah. What do you I, I mean, it, it depends. But I will talk about it a little more further. What do you think? Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, so let's recap the ng metadata. Uh, it uses pure Angular 1 API under the hood. There are no abstractions. It uses Angular 1 templates, support, supports everything that you can do in Angular 1. You can do it with uh, ng metadata. Cool. And, and very important thing is all the decorators are taken from Angular 2 codebase. I didn't reinvent the wheel. I used Angular 2 codebase for the decorators, and it uh, works flawlessly. Nice. And it can be used as an upgrade strategy with ng upgrade right away so okay so it can be part of this strategy yeah exactly but again it depends because uh if you're a situation like our or companies with our uh, use enterprise projects which is already in production you can you can just afford right now to start uh, using ng upgrade and have a huge a chunk of javascript to, the, to your users, because uh, Angular 2 is still like 500 kilobytes. So it's it's not really feasible. And also, our management uh, is not OK to to ship beta beta version of Angular 2 to the customers. So what's uh, what's your experience? Because I'm, I believe that you are using ng metadata at your company. So what's yeah. your experience there? So I think uh, my colleagues love it. It's it's much nicer. and. To write the code like this, we have TypeScript. Uh, we have not mi migrated everything yet, but it's a gradual uh, upgrade. That's that's nice. the nice thing about it, like component by component. I think uh, a lot of people will will go for that approach, like a uh, hybrid migration. Yeah, yeah. I, I I hope so. I uh, what I want to say is like all of you Angular one users, you have to migrate to Angular two because it's so much better. Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that's for sure. That's for sure. You know, if you ask me, then you should you should uh, you know go for Angular two at the moment you can. <laughs> yep, exactly. So let's re recap the benefits of using TypeScript and ma ma ng metadata. Uh, you are using the latest features, so you learn the new things and leverage them to the full extent. Your code is much cleaner. Uh, you have better tests. Because you don't have to introduce all the Angular machinery when you yeah. are using module system, and I have there's some uh, nice wrappers in ng metadata provided for unit testing, and it gives you Angular to mindset in Angular one. 
So your team can already be familiar with Angular 2 when the time comes and you will switch. Yeah, I like, I like that approach. Yeah. And if you are wondering if this is a weekend project or so, it isn't. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a weekend project. It's not. Sorry? <laughs> is it not? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I, <laughs> no, it isn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah, I put it's a lot. Good. That is not. <laughs> I, I put a lot of hard work into it. So, <clears throat> yeah. And what is the roadmap? Uh, currently, there is uh, 1.01 1 .1 stable version right now. It supports uh, Angular 1.5 and higher. Uh, I plan to uh, release 1.2 in March, which will incorporate ng on changes lifecycle, life cycle, which is in Angular 2. So you don't need to use scope anymore for uh, extendable watches or so. Cool. And there will be a breaking change in 2.0. There will be a one-way data binding used by default. Uh, in input properties, and it will support only uh, Angular 1.5 and higher. And after that, uh, I'm planning to do some uh, more features like uh, dependency injection sugar, like Angular 2 does, so you don't have to use the inject decorators, just the type annotations in TypeScript. And align and provide some uh, APIs for ng upgrade. Well, that's, that's a lot of work, Martin, that you that you have, you know, in your agenda. Yeah, I love open source. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So mm, that's all nice. But maybe you're asking why not just go with Angular 2. Right? Well, if you are fortunate enough, you can. If you have like small project, throw it away, rewrite it from the scratch in Angular 2. It's really amazing. But if you have uh, huge projects, it's not possible just to throw it away and rewrite, stop the internet working during the time That's of rewrite. Realistic. It's not realistic as well. Yeah. And why not just go immediately with ng upgrade? Well, as I said, it depends. Uh, it's a very feasible option to do it this way and to skip ng metadata. But if you are in a situation like we are, as, we, as I mentioned, we just cannot uh, produce uh, ship, ship uh, pro Production ready code with beta software, which is yeah, uh, that will be the case for some people, of course. Yeah. So, and if you want to learn more, more just uh, hit the GitHub. Uh, there is a pretty expensive uh, API documentations with examples. And this weekend, we did a workshop about ng1 ES5 migration to TypeScript and ng metadata step nice. by step. Nice, very good. So you can check it out, um, right? To, to, to like hands on if it's working for you. And I would like to invite you if you will be lucky enough and be in Prague uh, around 30th of March. We are doing a first ever Angular Focus Conference in Czech Yay. Republic. Yay! <laughs> and it will, be, it will be pretty. <laughs> I didn't know about it. Oh, oh that's, that's the conference you invited me, isn't it? Yeah, that? yeah, that's, that's the okay, one. Okay, OK, no, no, now I know. So yeah, we will have international speakers. We will have uh, Igor Minar on Hangouts for nice. half, half hours. So it is for free. So yeah, check it wow. out. Wow, very good, very good. Well, uh, I think that was a lot, a lot to, you know, a lot of information. <laughs> Yeah, well, for sure. Thanks, uh, Martin. Uh, for I think have you finished? I don't. Maybe I'm yeah, yeah. To... That, that's I. I mean, that's it. Uh, if you get any questions, hit me on Twitter. And um, these slides will be available after this uh, webinar. So yeah, you can. We will post this. We will post these materials uh, on the on the same page that we are broadcasting, so everyone has access to it. We we also have you know the meetup page and. Some other places where we will be, you know, commenting and uh, answering questions. So, well, I think I think you did a, a pretty good job. And uh, thanks. thanks. I'm I'm wondering what will you be what will you be doing in few months because you you seem that you will be like really really busy if everybody is going, you know, to use ng metadata. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it takes to do open source, like. 
Yeah, that's that's really nice. Well, I can see that you have a, a guitar there. What is what's that? Yeah, that, you have you have uh, also a guitar. You can play something. Oh wow! Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's just you know okay. play something. <laughs> But unfortunately, okay. I have electric guitar, so you won't hurt right. it. <laughs> well, I think that's that's the end for for this webinar. Hope you you have enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, if you have an idea for another webinar, you know I'm happy to hear it. Uh, see you soon. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Thanks, Gerard. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. Ciao. Ciao.